Greetings Libra and a warm welcome to your in-depth year 2024 astrology and horoscope forecast. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to briefly outline how I'm going to structure the video. First up we need to look at the two eclipses which occur in October 2023 and one of them is a solar eclipse in your sign which is really exciting. But we also have on the 28th of October a lunar eclipse which is in the part of your situation to do with where you're most invested in an emotional or financial way. So we just need to explore those because the influence of those two eclipses is going to provide a backdrop for the first quarter of year 2024. Then we need to look at your solar return. This is the snapshot of when the new year begins. This provides energy which will be ongoing for the following 12 months, so very influential indeed. Then I'm going to go on to explore the nodal axis. Very important for you in particular this year because the south node is going to be in your sign all of this year. But the nodal axis is very much linked to eclipses and you're going to have your second eclipse but a lunar eclipse which occurs on the 25th of March. Now that is going to provide some challenges reflecting back on the potential, the wonderful potential of the solar eclipse of the 14th of October. So we need to look into that. But then we have a solar eclipse in your sector of relating on the 8th of April, but it is going to be uh, pretty close to a retreating Mercury in a retrograde, but that provides a potential for the following six months. You also have the North Node, but also Chiron all in your sector of relating at this part of the year. I want to share with you also about some marvellous transitions featuring your ruling planet Venus, because Venus is going to be coming into contact with Mars, the planet of, of desire and passion, in a conjunction in two, uh, in two episodes this year, which can be really exciting for your relationship sector. But also Jupiter, the planet of growth and optimism, comes together with Venus, your ruler, on the 23rd of May. And I feel that that can be really critical for financial developments in a very exciting and positive manner. Then Jupiter is going to be moving into the sign of Gemini, which of course shares your air element. And that suggests in the second half of this year, uh, you could be doing some traveling, certainly expanding your horizons. But this is a year when Mercury, the planet of communication, is going to go through four fire retrogrades. It starts the year in retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius, your everyday communicational sector. Then it's in retrograde in the part of your scope to do with how you connect to people in the sign of Aries. Then it's going to go retrograde uh, in the sign of Leo but first of all in the sign of Virgo. So that's going to be the only short retrograde we have this year, which is not in a fire sign. And that's in your 12th house. So that is tender. And also on the 18th of September, we have a new eclipse series beginning. And the first of those occurs in the sign of Pisces, which for you is where you provide services, but it's also your physical vitality, very close to Neptune. And of course, Saturn is in this area for the whole of the year. So that's a very critical new eclipse series that emerges from September. But then we need to look at your personal new moon. And this year, so exciting. On the 2nd of October, it's in your sign, of course, but it's a solar eclipse, an annular uh, eclipse, but it is very close to Mercury in your sign. So that brings real opportunities. And then as we go into the end of the year, Mars is going to be going into a retrograde, but 
in your sector of friendship so that's interesting but also your sector of longer term plans but then mercury moves back into sagittarius for the second time in the year so we end the year with a degree of synergy from the start of the year so something to do with everyday communications is going to be impacted by mercury's retrograde at the start and the end of the year so there's so much exciting stuff to tell you definitely about relationships but also about your potential to actualize your true talents. Please stay with me for more. I'd just like to share with you a very special opportunity. If you're watching this video in year 2023, you can order your year 2024 personal horoscope forecast based on your unique birth data. And I will prepare for you the rest of year 2023 free of charge. If you're ordering within year 2024, you will get a full 12 months from the exact time of your order. You will also, my special package, get 30% off and your character analysis report, your life roadmap. This will help you to understand the patterns that have repeated themselves in your situation, help you to seize upon the opportunities and get a much more intimate understanding of some of the challenges and how you can work with them future forwards in a more effective way. Please see beneath this video for more information. So Libra, let's first of all unpack those two eclipses which occur in October 23. The first on the 14th in your sign, pretty close to the South Node. The South Node is really where you're coming from as a collective sign. It's not the same as where your natal uh, nodal positions are necessarily. I mean, you could have them across the axis of Libra and Aries but it's not an automatic given. So collectively as a Libran person, we have uh, the South Node very close to that eclipse. So it's kind of saying to you, what is it that you want to bring into the end of 23, but into the start of 24? It's very much to do with your personal passions and your desires. And it's possible that uh, showing a more single-minded approach is going to be important to you because you can, you know, really lean into other people's needs so skillfully. The danger of that is that we can, at times, remember I have the Libra Ascendant, there can be a tendency to lose our identity a little bit from that. So you're really being given an opportunity to firm up who you are, but also set your intentions in terms of individual talents, qualities even you may find yourself coming into the new year in a new dynamic way in terms of your personal appearance you may give yourself a big makeover now the lunar eclipse is the last in the series across the axis of scorpio the sun and uh, taurus the moon so in the sign of taurus of course you have jupiter which can be very good for business particularly remember on the 23rd of May, which I'll tell you about shortly. But of, of course, Uranus has been there as well, which is a very disrupting influence. And it's not at its best in the sign of Taurus. It's been asking you to think freshly about how you marshal your long term resources. But I feel that the lunar eclipse could bring into focus as you come into the new year a need to balance your individuality with where you're most invested with others now that can be financially you know it could even be your choice of mortgage or bank or, or insurer uh, because they're all governed by the eighth house and you may be showing a much more single-minded approach but when it comes to your personal scenario that means that in a close alliance particularly a love relationship your desire to manifest your individuality may jar a little bit against the other person's need to feel that you're really connected to them in quite the deep way that they may be craving so there's a little bit of an incompatibility between those two eclipses but that brings us to the turn of the year so at the exact moment that year 2024 begins we can take a snapshot of where all the planets are uh, allocated around the wheel for you personally and the big takeout as I mentioned before, is the fact that Mercury is in a retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius. 
But for you, that's house three, and that's to do with quick thinking, very Gemini-like to be honest, but through the prism of Sagittarius, it may be that you want to learn something or impart some knowledge, but it's very close to Mars. So I'm just showing on the screen now, you can see that Mercury in its retrograde, close to Mars. So that combination is likely to make you much more outspoken in year 2024. Now that's not a bad thing, but it could also make you a lot more restless because when we put mercury next to mars it can be hard in the third house particularly and in sagittarius where mars is very athletic to sit still for long so even if you're someone who's a born again couch potato you may find yourself wanting to be much more active throughout the year but what does the retrograde mean well of course the third house rules short journeys it can govern modes of transport particularly bicycles electric bikes or scooters because it's very quick moving you could apply it to uh, looking and researching for say a car that's probably more ninth housey but then of course sagittarius very ninth house influence so don't be surprised if you're thinking about changing your mode of of, uh, of transport this year but also your mode of physical activity now your ruler is also in the sign of Sagittarius so it's going to be a chatty year but one of the things that's important to understand with a Mercury retrograde is that in the sign of Sagittarius I think you're going to be identifying with your philosophies a lot more around your conversation throughout the year and that means that if you encounter resistance that could create frustration and it also could mean that even if you don't encounter resistance somebody just doesn't understand what you're trying to say so the tension point could be with a neighbor could be with a sibling could be in your community it could be that you're going to find yourself in some kind of debate on some kind of online forum you know the names of the big forums um, and so you're going to find yourself much more engaged in expressing yourself. Now, I feel that Mercury retrograde can be a good thing in that regard, particularly if you've tended to sort of resist articulating yourself because you've wanted to keep things on a balance, which, of course, is very much in keeping with your sign. But Mercury is technically detrimented in Sagittarius. So one of the dangers is that we can quickly download an idea, third house, and then rush it because of the impatience of Mars. So you're responding to something in a bit of a triggered way. So all sorts of conversations all this year with this series of fire Mercury retrogrades will require slowing things down a little bit, but at the same time, then going to increase your passion, which I think is a really good thing. Now, I mentioned about your ruler Venus. In the sign of Sagittarius, that has a, a love of freedom. But in the third house, you're going to be attracted to people who you find mentally stimulating. Now, that might always be the case, but your desire for this is really going to be amped up this year. But there are some complexities beyond those that I've just expressed. And that's because if we go to house six, which is very much to do with service, but your physical health, your work, your life order, Saturn and uh, Neptune are located in that area and you can see that Saturn's at 3 degrees 14 and so it squares back to Venus so there could be times this year when as usual you're being you know very attuned to other people even actually trying to be very helpful in a practical way but you won't necessarily always get the recognition or sense that people appreciate you as much as you rightly deserve so there could be a coolness around certain interactions this year which could increase your sense of frustration because neptune in house six which can erode your vitality at times this year obviously saturn can be limiting as well well neptune applies to mars and mercury so Neptune in the sixth house, along with Saturn, suggests that when it comes to your work, there could be a sense of dissatisfaction at times if it is all give and there's not a lot of, of recognition for that. But because Neptune is in a square with Mars, there can also be a little bit of confusion. And because Mercury is in a square with Neptune, your words can be misinterpreted or perhaps 
you won't at times quite download messages in the way that another person may feel they've sent them to you. So just be aware that even when you're trying your hardest to be the proverbial good egg, apologies if you're a vegan, even if you're trying your best to really be a decent person, Neptune and Saturn applying to those three planets, including your ruler in your sector of everyday communication, does suggest some limitation and frustration. But on the other side of the heavens, the moon, critical, is in house 12 in the rather precise punctilious sign of Virgo in a direct opposition with Saturn and T squaring back to Venus. Now Venus square the moon, do you know it's one of those squares that actually can be very generous and warm-hearted, perhaps a bit extravagant at times, but I feel that having Saturn in the mix really cools things down. So it's kind of saying to you that even if you try to interact with people in a very bright and knowledgeable way, the psychological or practical domains of life could catch you out because other people don't hear what you're saying as you mean it, even though you're a very skillful communicator. And, you know, it's incredible how people can misunderstand where we're coming from. And that sense of frustration that could come up at times is something you need to be mindful of. But also, in terms of your own psychological health, Saturn, especially if you're tired, can impact on your emotions. So there may be times this year when you do want to retreat a little bit. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all, as long as you're aware of it. But also, if we take the midpoint between the position of the moon and the sun, which is always at this time of year in Capricorn, at 10 degrees in two minutes, we have a midpoint at eight degrees in Scorpio. So the balance that we're all going to experience this year between the sun and the moon, which is the sun's about our outer world, our desire to achieve things, uh, much more uh, driven, the moon much more receptive to do with protection, nurture and emotion. The balance between the two is in the complex sign of Scorpio. But for you, that's in the second house. Now, if you remember, that uh, lunar eclipse on the 28th of October was in house eight. But the great news for you, Libra, is that if you look across the chart, there in house eight is Jupiter, pretty well in an opposition with that midpoint. So a relationship can develop for you this year, professionally or personally, which actually can be good financially. And that's something to really look forward to and savour. But I feel that what you're wanting from all that communication from Sagittarius is to improve the foundations in your world, to become more secure and to work on your sense of self-worth, which very important because your sign ruled by Venus is much more to do with relating and presentation and how you interact and, and partnerships and harmony. But Venus's rulership of Taurus is much more to do with self-worth and money and value. So you're being asked to be mindful of that principle for the whole of this year. But there's something I need to tell you about that's truly exciting. Despite the fact that the moon for you is marooned in house 12, if you look at where Jupiter is in house eight, there's an exact trine, 120 degrees between those two, five degrees 59 for the moon, 534 for Jupiter. But if we carry on round to the sun, that's a little further advanced at 10 degrees, but it's actually within four degrees of both positions because the moon is just one minute under six degrees and Jupiter is less than half a minute under um, six degrees too so they're linking back to the sun and a four degree orb is very close so we have a grand earth trine which is really auspicious so what this year is asking you to do with that Scorpio midpoint the emotional 12th house position of the moon but in the practical Virgo the very nurturing position of the sun in house four very Cancerian even if in the worldly Capricorn and Jupiter in house eight, very Scorpionic, those linking together are really pointing towards opportunities to improve the sense of security emotionally, but also practically in your situation this year. Now, I know we've all been on the end of a, a big reset, 
which came about through the North Node initially going into the sign of Taurus, connecting with Uranus in a very disruptive way and obviously squaring up with Saturn which was then in Aquarius and clashing with the lunar eclipse if you recall of the 8th of November 2022 and that really triggered the kind of increase in costs and interest rates and uh, inflation rates that we've all been encountering but I think this chart gives you a lot of potential to use your mind and your intellect as long as you're measuring your words and you have a gift for that more than any other sign and being very conscious of how you're sharing your ideas and just being protective of your physical energy with Saturn and Neptune in the sixth house there is real potential this year for you to make progress in terms of the financial part of your situation but those frustrations with Mercury are set to ease. So with Mercury going direct, it's not yet out of shadow, but there is a truly momentous event which occurs on the 21st of January. This is when Pluto makes its way back into Aquarius. If you recall, it went into the sign of Pisces on the 23rd of March, but it was only for 11 weeks. This year it's going to spend over 30 weeks in the sign of Aquarius and why this is particularly important for your sign is that uh, Pluto moves into the fifth house the fifth house very much to do with where we express joy uh, pleasures uh, we demonstrate our talents and flair and skill also it's to do with uh, romance children if we like them or we have them their pursuits and endeavors can provide a lot of satisfaction so it's a really important house and of course Pluto has been going through the fourth house for Libran people since 2008 over 15 years so that's been a tough old time so moving into the air triplicity showing with you is a real uplifting moment but not least because the 21st of January also sees the Sun return to Aquarius so we've got a conjunction between the two but also it's Pluto's birthday now when Pluto was first discovered they thought it was February the 8th but found some further photographs that had been taken a little bit earlier and discovered that actually it was the 21st so the symbolism of this in terms of our collective destiny is huge because the sign of Aquarius is about us all together humanity person kind uh, but it's particularly positive for your sign so that's really lovely the fifth house is where you want the things that would really uh, bring joy to your life to manifest and Pluto of course is very much about very powerful transformations but there's more wonderful news to come because on the 13th of February and through to the 23rd of March Mars the planet of passion also moves into the sign of Aquarius and this is very much to do with extra physical vitality drive desire but it also is going to give you a lot of extra confidence when it comes to your sex appeal really really lovely stuff but also from the 15th of February Venus the planet of uh, love and relating and your ruler moves into the sign of Aquarius through to the 13th of March and they all and they both come together on the 15th of March in a conjunction so this is really potent and very very exciting for you I'm really really heartened uh, about this for you really uh, a, a scintillating development so your ability to feel good about yourself but to attract goodness to you and if you're looking for a romantic relationship this is really significant and of course this is a year when the North Node and Chiron and the coming solar eclipse on the 8th of April are all electrifying your sector of relating in a really exciting way now as February comes to a close it is true that the retreat in North Node meets with Chiron so if relationship matters have brought you a lot of pain in your life and I think for Libran people there is 
uh, part of your nature which is so skilled at attuning to others, it's very easy to feel a sense of loss because generally people are not so good at listening. They're not so good at tuning in to what other people's experiences are. What we're really good at is expressing what we need in terms of the first person, in other words, our ego. So if there is some outstanding uh, legacy from your past, I think the combination of Venus and Mars, but also uh, the North Node connecting with Chiron, does provide a wonderful opportunity for healing. Now we all know with Chiron, it can be uh, a pain that we can never completely erase, but what we can do is get a lot more insight and a lot more understanding and that solar eclipse don't forget it from the middle of october is giving you a lot of impulse to stay in your power the new term for it i think is agency stay in your agency stay really strong about what you want as an individual but the fifth house part of your situation is where you can be more daring it's to do with risk or speculation and Venus can be to do with money so the combination of the two could be good if you're wanting to do something that's more enterprising and more entrepreneurial it doesn't have to just play out in terms of a personal relationship and of course relationships don't have to just be about romance you know that more than any other sign so your connections can really be lit up in a very, very positive way at this early point in the year. But that brings us through to the 25th of March and the lunar eclipse in your sign. Now, I just want to tell you about the passage of Mercury because it's moved on and for 10 weeks from the 10th of March to the 15th of May, it is in the sign of Aries, which is your opposite sign. Mercury in the seventh house is actually quite the ace because it helps us to be a bit more detached if people see things differently. So we give people a little bit more space to express a different view. It's not so threatening to us, but also it's an opportunity again to link to others in a very skilled way. But just so you know, from the 1st of April to the 25th of April, it is retracing its steps. So there is a retrograde. So you know, retrogrades can be multifaceted. They can bring opportunities to reapply experiences we've gained in a better way. Sometimes they can provide niggles and snags, as we all know. But I wouldn't see this Mercury retrograde as a glass half empty. I really would see it as a chance to try to double down on your desire to feel respected and acknowledged by others, because that's where the trend line for this year is heading for you. But that brings us to that lunar eclipse in your sign. So this is kind of saying that if you're not feeling heard and, you know, especially in an ongoing tie, which you put a lot of effort into, there could be a very intense period then when all these positive energies are making you much more aware of what you really deserve. And if it's not being those needs are not being met, that could, that eclipse, see you want to uh, go to the door marked exit. But I must stress, that will only happen if you feel that you've exhausted every single avenue to try to make the situation work. But then, on the 8th of April, we have the solar eclipse in your opposite sign of Aries, augmenting Chiron, the North Node, and obviously, uh, the initial blast of energy that came from Pluto moving into Aquarius, Venus and Mars into Aquarius, because I've got more great news to tell you, because on the 5th of April, Venus moves into your 7th house, your relating sector, where it's going to be through to the 28th of April, and it's joined from the 1st of May by Mars through to the 9th of June. Now, Mars in the 7th house can be quite combative, you know, it can set boundaries. In a natal chart, it can cause some mischief, uh, but it can be good for speaking up for our rights, which because uh, sometimes I feel that Libran people uh, uh, can find that more difficult to express the cardinality. You may find yourself being much more assertive during that period of time. But just so you know, on June the 29th, 
they come into an exact conjunction. So this is a magical possibility for you, getting another chance to make things work out around relationships. And for sure that solar eclipse of the 8th of April, although it is pretty close by five degrees to the retreat in Mercury, and there could be some rethinking, maybe there will be some changes around your relationship sector, but it's all taken you in the direction of actualizing your true worth, which really is going to become more obvious to you, Libra, by the time of that solar eclipse in your sign on the 2nd of October. But I've got a little bit to share with you before then. If you remember, I said to you that on May the 23rd, there was going to be a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. In traditional astrology, Venus is known as the lesser and Jupiter the greater benefix. But don't believe that Venus isn't a good influence or can't be good for you it most certainly can but in the sign of taurus it's very much about money but for you it's the eighth house long-term money i think a real stroke of fortune can manifest itself towards the end of may for you it could be around a property matter a pension payout uh, perhaps even a flutter which pays off it could be you can also be fortunate from somebody else's good fortune. So someone you're close to or linked to, perhaps linked to a, a legacy, for example. However, then Jupiter moves on the 26th into your sister, uh, air sign of Gemini. And this really is giving you the potential to really open up your world in a really exciting way and in the second part of this year I think it's very possible that you will want to travel more uh, get much more into learning new skills downloading knowledge generally and being more adventurous and outgoing but we do have the complexities of the Mercury season that goes through July August and September because Mercury moves into your sector of friendship from the 2nd of July to the 25th but it then moves into Virgo and the retrograde begins on August the 5th but for you that's the 12th house there could be some cross wires I have to be honest across this period of the year and you may actually feel a little defle deflated at times we also have uh, Mercury uh, then going back into Leo but then re-emerging back into Virgo on September the 9th it actually goes direct on August the 28th initially in Leo so it may be around friendships particularly that a lack of trust could come up in certain associations but that then sees that uh, new uh, eclipse series starting to develop so on the uh, 18th of September we have uh, a lunar eclipse in Pisces which is where Saturn and Neptune are for you all year so obviously the key with uh, Neptune and Saturn in the sixth house is that they can affect energy and I think the retrograde is going to be potentially quite tough so Neptune it's from the 2nd of July to the 7th of December Saturn uh, from the 29th of June to the 15th of November but when that uh, lunar eclipse occurs it's very close to Neptune. This is a testing point for you because if you are still being too attuned to others the exhaustion that that can create will be manifest and you could get caught up in, in that for the second part of the year so be strong about those boundaries you know knowing when to say no is very important in life but that then brings us back to that sensational uh, uh, eclipse which occurs in your sign on the 2nd of October. It's an annular uh, solar eclipse, but it provides a backdrop for the following six months. But it's very close to Mercury, but it's not in retrograde. So this brings us back to the start of that eclipse series season that I was explaining that begins for you on the 14th of October 2023. So you can see with all that energy in the seventh house, that's tremendous opportunities around relationships. Venus and Mars are supporting you beautifully across the fifth and seventh houses. You have that lovely energy in the eighth house, which can be to do with intimacy towards the end of May. But then when you get back to your personal uh, new moon, the eclipse, this is really asking you to use your mind powers 
to really push your agenda forward. So it's really taken a firm grip on your life direction. Maybe that lunar eclipse in, in Pisces conjunct Neptune is going to teach you some lessons. You know, it's important. We can't pour from an empty pot. And as you thrust into the end of the year, Mercury does return back into the sign of Sagittarius. So we get this synchronistic uh, cycle and that's from the 2nd of November, but it goes retrograde again from the 26th of November through to the middle of December. But remember, Mars is also going retrograde in Leo towards the end of the year. So communication around friendships and is going to be something or your longer term future that you have to be mindful of. But I think your determination to push forwards with what's really important for you is going to be absolutely incredible as this year comes to a close. So I think it is a year when fire, passion around communication could see you be a bit more impulsive, but I think it is going to see you stand up for yourself more. I think defending your boundaries, but also demonstrating how adorable and gorgeous and alluring you are is a big part of this year. So I think relationship potential is very, very strong for you this year, Libra. And I think you know if you watch my videos, I don't say these things lightly. I think it's very important to be very sincere. But I am excited for you and for me too. But also, I think finances can pick up too. It's been a real pleasure being with you. I wish you all the best for year 2024. Please like, comment, share or subscribe.